Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, you know you're cycling too much when... We discuss the signs and the symptoms, everything from suppressed heart rate to suppressed social lives. Plus, Pinarello have just announced the bikes that will be used by the Italian track team. He couldn't go for a pee for 29 hours. And hopefully they didn't do what you did to Mark Cavendish. Mm. I was really surprised and very excited. Now, I don't want to blame Killian Kelly. I do. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that the Pope is in the market for a new bike after he just sold his Pinarello. Yeah, 14,000 euros for rim brakes and mechanical oh. Ultegra. It seems a little bit steep, but you know, I guess he can kind of do what he wants. We also <laughs> learned that we need more Alex Beningos in the world. Sick of getting punctures all the time, he now cycles around Atlanta, Georgia, towing strong magnets behind him to pick up debris off the road. Guess how much he collects? I actually have no idea. What, like a handful? Yeah, well, 75 kilos a month. Alex Beningo, hero. Yes, yeah. yeah. Hero walks among us. Exactly, exactly. We also learned this week that the ultimate accessory for the gravel rider who has absolutely everything is gravel trainers. Gravel running. Yep. It is a thing. Craft Sportswear have collaborated with Victoria Tyres on a new running shoe, the sole of which is designed and made by Victoria to perform on gravel. Well, you know what they say, Si. Gravel is a state of mind. Yeah, apparently yeah. it is, James. Yeah, although currently in England, gravel is literally only in our dreams because <laughs> what we have instead is mud. Endless, yeah. endless mud. Which actually brings us very neatly onto this week's main talking point, okay? So you know you have done too much cycling when... Hold on a minute. How does riding in endless UK mud bring us onto too much cycling? Well, aside from the dip in morale yeah. associated with too much mud, uh, it dawned on me when I was getting some washing <laughs> out of the machine. Uh, and as it as I pulled it out through the door, you know, as you do, yeah. uh, it got covered with this kind of like grey brown liquid. Ho hold on a minute. Do you want to hear the end of this? Well, I think for my sake, you have to hear the end of the story because that does sound dodgy, right? Um, basically, if you wash a lot of winter cycling kit, yeah. you have to regularly clean out your washing machine as well. And it made me think that that was a sign that maybe I've been getting too wet and too muddy for too long. The fact that my washing machine is ruined. Yeah, I mean, it does remind me of that meme about there actually being 11 seasons, not just four. Winter, <laughs> full spring, second winter, then I think we're somewhere between spring of deception and then mud season. Yes, yeah, just before actual spring in late May. Yeah. Um, well, no, I have had enough now, quite frankly. Ge like, genuinely, I've had enough. Make well, it stop. For most of us, though, there's no such thing as too much cycling. We all benefit from doing more and definitely enjoy doing more too. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Mm. I seem to spend half my life dreaming <laughs> about riding. But there is also a serious side to riding too much, of course. Ultra-endurance yeah. cycling is becoming more and more popular, but it's not without its risk, is it? Hank, you must have some stories yeah. from some of your exploits. I mean, I definitely do. First one that comes to mind is getting really, really bad acid reflux during Mark Beaumont and I's relay record from Land's End to John O'Groat. That's not what I was expecting. You know you've done too much cycling when you get acid reflux. Yeah, it's true. It generally happens. And it actually left me struggling to eat for a few days. Really? Yeah. Why, why did cycling cause acid reflux? Well, it's, I think it's because I was in that kind of aerodynamic prologue position and okay. I just couldn't I just couldn't digest food properly no way yeah. so that was, that was one problem that's a curveball yeah Yeah. I ate it swollen knees was also one for my John O'Groats Land's End on tandem the 24 hour the failed tandem record. Fa failed tandem record the yeah. 24 hours on Zwift that I completed what 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 was the side effect from that one swollen knees oh really this is all from the same thing uh, yeah yeah um, uh, 356 miles uh, on gravel that was also a swollen knee swollen issue knees. So, and you had swollen something else after the penny farthing and that was only an hour wasn't it I need to get a new saddle yeah let's not go into that yeah no, no less said about that the yeah. better um, there is moving swiftly on from that a lot of nerve damage 
yeah. done in ultra races. Okay, so really serious, and I don't think it's talked about very much actually. The um, is it the ulnar nerve in your hands that means your hands go numb? Um, that's a regular one. I have and had it can that. last for a long time afterwards. Mm. I heard of a guy whose feet went numb in his 600k race, and it took him six months to get the feeling back. Mm. Like that is bad, isn't it? And then there's poor old Mark Beaumont, who when <laughs> he was setting the record for the North Coast 500. He couldn't go for a pee for 29 hours. I mean, if I've ever heard of a reason to get off your bike and not cycle, then that'd be well up there. Yeah, I, I happen to agree. <laughs> um, now, what about social lives? Okay, because that is as important as being able to go for a wee, I think, frankly, isn't it? It's possible to get a little bit obsessed yeah. with cycling, maybe miss out on a few things. Well, I wouldn't know, actually. Well, I mean... No, neither would I. Not since I was 16, anyway. <laughs> and I made an excuse <laughs> so I could go for a bike ride. But you do hear it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do. You know what the problem is, don't you? Aside from bike riding just being fun and sociable, it's actually what you, go, what you guys talked about last week about cycling releasing oxytocin. Well, yeah, this is true. So for all of you who didn't watch last yeah. week, um, research has shown that cycling releases oxytocin, okay? It's a hormone that's also released when it's business time. Yeah, see? Bit of cuddling, yeah. oxytocin. Bit of bike riding, oxytocin. <laughs> yeah, ride your bike enough, you won't notice the lack of social life. No, you wouldn't. I mean, it's their own, of course. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure there are worse ways to spend your time than bike riding. However, there is another serious side to this, okay? Not just nerve damage, but overtraining which I don't think you're familiar with. Absolutely not. No, funny that. Um, now I have fallen foul of this a that, few times. That is actually pretty dumb, so if I'm honest. It, it is pretty dumb. Yeah. You'd think you'd only do it once. Right, you? exactly. No. Um, so this is a genuine warning, okay? For if you do ride too much, particularly too much intensity, and crucially, with not enough recovery, then you can dig yourself a little bit of a hole. So go on then, what are the symptoms? Uh, well, there are a few, to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, the first easy one to spot is actually through your heart rate, okay? Yeah. So a high resting heart rate, like over a number of days, like a regular thing, um, which does of course mean that you need to check your resting heart rate, which is also a sign of <laughs> obsession. Um, although a wearable device does that make it easier. Um, but for me actually, the one that I notice is when my heart rate doesn't go up, when I'm doing hard efforts. If my, if I, mm. if my heart rate doesn't go up, um, that's a surefire sign that I'm getting close to needing some rest days. Not that I'm in a hole, but just like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm a bit puffed out now. Yeah. yeah. Training doesn't actually make you get better though, does it? Recovery does. That is the important the bit, isn't it? A lot of people forget that. Yeah. Myself. <laughs> Included. Included. Yeah. Um, yeah, because if you battle on through the heart rate warnings, okay, then you got chronic muscle soreness. That's another. Feeling tired all the time. That yeah. is another. But then those are sneaky ones because you kind of get those anyway when you're training, don't you? Like, so how do you know whether it's a chronic thing or, you know, something that you bounce back from in a couple of days? So really, you just got to keep a track, haven't you? Mm. And also keep track of your motivation because often when you're tired, you can't be bothered. Yeah, and what happens if you do too much too long? Well, you've got to take time off, haven't you, basically? Like any kind of injury, you've got to rest in order to get better and then start building up again, which is blooming annoying, but you can't push through it, nah. which is what I have learned several times. Yeah. I'm sure most people don't have to worry about this one. But yeah. as I said, it's not just about doing loads of riding, it's also about not recovering enough. So that might be because your job demands that you're flat out and constantly stressed, or you've got... It's a bit like you then, isn't it? Well, exactly, constantly stressed. Yeah, and flat out. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you've got young kids, which I haven't. Um, Two dogs, though. You have got to, with one puppy, which does keep Ooh, me awake at night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sleep, or more opinionally, you're out partying every single night, which is definitely not me either. All these things add up, don't they? Yeah, they do. They do add up. Mm. Um, we want to hear from you lot on this, okay? I bet there are some genuinely hilarious, yeah. you know you've been cycling too much when stories. So get involved yeah. in the comments section down below. Don't get too worried about overtraining, because as Hank said, it probably doesn't really actually relates to all that many but for a few of you it might be a light bulb going off so uh, pay attention I, I am interested to see what people come up with well absolutely yeah I mean it, I can see them floating in already yeah I mean yeah it's the social ones isn't it mm. it's the kind of like you know I won't I won't go into details about the last time I did it but yeah. you know even now whatever it is 24 <laughs> years on I'm like huh <laughs> <laughs> 
Did I really do? Yeah. That no, was really good. I know you it was did. a really good bike ride, but you know, still. <laughs> And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're gonna start with some racing news. So we filmed this prior to the Tour of Flanders, because actually we've all gone on holiday over the Easter weekend. We're not really here, are we? Or well, we are here now, but... But we, we're not really. No, not exactly. Yeah. Um, so, because we don't want to miss out on the racing, uh, we've got a little update from Lloydy. So how do you lot get a holiday? And I don't. No rest for the wicked, I guess. Uh, the big bit of news last week actually came before Flanders even happened. So Wout van Aert was amongst a number of riders who crashed at 80 kilometers per hour last Wednesday at Doisdor of Landren. He broke a collarbone, seven ribs, and his sternum. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a while, obviously, before we see him back in action, but we wish him all the best in his recovery. It left Mathieu van der Poel as the big favorite for Flanders, and both he and his team duly delivered. Despite the wind and rain over the last part of the race, it was actually the fastest ever edition, 44.5 kilometers per hour average for six hours. In the words of Adam Blythe, that is bonkers. Uh, the big news in the women's was that there were no SD Works riders on the podium, but two from Lidl Trek. Elisa Longo Borghini took her second victory at the race, a mere nine years after her first, ahead of Nuvia Doma and teammate Van Androoy. Uh, we also need to say a big get well soon to Lizzie Diagon, who broke her arm, and Marlon Rursa, who broke both ear canals, her jaw, and eight teeth in that same crash. Uh, that sounds so painful, but from what we've heard from her team, she's in surprisingly good spirits. We've got to give Mark Cavendish a shout out, as well as for an impressive 29th place at the Corkill Road Race in the Isle of Man. We do, indeed. Uh, it's perhaps not one to add to his Palmares, is it? But it's how probably not cool his best is result, is it? No, but for a rider of his calibre to yeah. turn up to a local road yeah. race, having ridden to the start, racing with his saddlebag on, racing with his leg warmers on, chopping turns with some probably starstruck locals. Yeah, I've got to say, this is super cool. I was actually reading it and going, I can imagine just all those club riders, all, you know, who've looked up for you know, Mark, for years and years and then racing with him and then having the results of, <laughs> of him coming behind them must be just incredible. Yeah. Generally incredible. And hopefully they didn't do what you did to Mark Cavendish when you raced against him, which was knock him off. Well, it was actually he knocked me off. And oh, I ended, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I ended it. up in a bus and then, but yeah, I did get that a old chest now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Mark are like that. I'll have you know. Um, anyway, we've also got a cheeky little update from Wahoo for their Element head units, which has added some brilliant connected features. Yeah, genuinely, mm -hmm. I was really surprised and very excited. Okay, so you can control music from your head unit now. Um, so you can't like search for tracks on Spotify or anything, but you can play, pause, skip, and adjust the volume uh, all from your head unit, which is super cool. Yeah, there's also smart lights that can be controlled from Wahoo now. Integrated workouts, dark mode plus coming soon, which I am so excited about. It's remote control for your GoPro 2, which is gonna make my descending videos freaking awesome. You just wanna leave it on, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, but it is actually a godsend for GC it really presenters, is. isn't it? It, it really, really is. is. Yeah. Now I did see this super cool story on the Radovis last week. Move over bikepacking, work packing is the new thing. Gunnar Velhor. I reckon you've got that. <laughs> packed up his life into an e-cargo bike in mid-winter. Now, was this winter or full spring, Hank? Definitely winter. It was actual winter. Winter, winter. Yeah. 333 days later, he wrote this about this article about being a digital nomad on a cargo bike. Go out and check it out because I am genuinely really impressed. Yeah, it didn't sound too easy, did it? No, uh, it didn't. For him or his work colleagues, mm. uh, who uh, obviously were actually doing work whilst he <laughs> work-packed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> boss, are you able to uh, answer the phone? No, I'm riding my bike. Go check it out because I'm genuinely really impressed. Yeah, I am too. It definitely mm. didn't sound easy for him. No. Um, nor for his colleagues. Maybe True. I'm reading between the lines there yeah. as he sort of like cycled. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, I think it's very cool. What, what I really liked actually was his packing strategy. Bear with me. It's more exciting than it sounds. So he had a bag for every room in his house. What a cool idea. I have never thought about that. Yeah, so it's that. like, uh, so this kitchen. is my- Yeah, kitchen, bedroom, um, sitting room, bathroom. We could have done that for our cargo bikepacking trip. 
Yeah. We should, we should have done that. Well, we didn't read the thing, did we? We had so much well, space. we just packed everything, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. Even the manor. That would be a good bike for work packing, wouldn't it? I mean, it would be ideal. It would literally yeah. get everything in. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Anyway. Yeah, because I was looking at his going like, nah, yeah, it's all right, but it's not that cool, is it? But that thing, yeah. the turn Oroch. I'll tell you what, that's the thing as well. Like, people overlook it, but packing is one of the most, you know... Is the... <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> but it is like, it's the most interesting part about bike packing <laughs> is people's packing because everyone has their own little way of how they pack. Yeah. Jenny Graham has some great little ideas of yeah. how to get it right. Now. You don't actually need to go anywhere on your bike, do you? you no, just, it's just do the packing just the aspect. Packing. Yeah. yeah. Just and pack, then, unpack, yeah, job, yeah, exactly. job done. Anyway, sorry, I digress, but that is a really important bit I wanted <laughs> it, to add. It is very important. Yeah. Hank's video <laughs> about how to pack it's coming soon. I will be. Yeah. Uh, right. From e-cargo bikes. Yes. And Hank's packing to yeah. the Olympics now in one seamless oh, motion. So seamless. Sorry. Pinarello have just announced the bikes that will be used by the Italian track mm-hmm. team. One of the big favourites this summer, aren't you? They have printed some more of their Belide track bikes, mm-hmm. uh, printed via 3D printing, of course. Um, it's the one that Ghana used in his record-breaking hour and record-breaking 4K pursuit, which I'd forgotten he did last year yeah but the first person to go under four minutes for four kilometers on your own absolutely flying this olympics as well yeah interestingly though the women's squad haven't got 3d printed frames they've got a lighter custom carbon model yeah i gotta say either sound pretty damn good they do yeah and lastly a bit of interesting bit of racing news GCN's website team are reporting that Demi Volering will leave her current SD Works team at the end of the year because they can't keep up with both her and Lottie Kopecky I'll get it out at the end (laughs) yeah no I've got to say I love transfer rumour mill time it's starting early it is isn't it so good work GCN web team um, but yeah, I thought that was a big omi- big um, admission from... Uh, <laughs> You're catching. It's contagious. You're catching. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie, man. It's hard to keep concentrated. I'm so excited at thinking about people packing for cargo bikes. So, I know. Uh, mate, yeah. It's where my brain's at too. Yeah, yeah, maybe we need to take a tea break. <laughs> oh, we do. <laughs> it's time now for Hack Forward Slash Bodge of the Week. And... Uh, well, it's really annoying, quite frankly, but the GCN uploader, the trusty old uploader, is still... Down. Yeah, basically, isn't it? I was trying to think of a cycling <laughs> analogy, but no, it's basically, it's, it's just broken. It's, it's bonked. Now, I don't want to blame Killian Kelly. I do. But He's where been riding is, his bike too much. That's it. Where is Killian currently? <laughs> He's at the Tour of Flanders. Yeah, yeah I think he needs the next Matthew van der Poel. Yeah. And... They do have one thing in common, which is that neither of them have successfully built an uploader for no, us this exactly. week. Um, so anyway, we want to apologise. Yeah, we want to say sorry, first of all, absolutely. And also, just please be patient. Keep these hacks and bodges stored on your phones. And then when the uploader is live again, yeah. then we want the torrent of hacks and bodges to just come flooding through because it's going to be like... Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, we can't wait to have it back. But saying that, we have got one for you. We, we do, yeah. Yeah. This one is from Peter Dobos, or Dobos. Uh, Sai, here's a hack or bodge for you. For your recently impaired forward slash, if you use your left arm instead of your right, then the swanky new microphone won't get in the way. So do you want to have a go? go? Well, well, there you go. You nailed it. I think that's a bodge. Looks easy, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just like... We'll just take a step back. Um, anyway, yeah, no, thank you though, Peter. I mean, I appreciate you uh, you're trying to sort of, trying to help us there, but yeah, yeah that's quite an uncomfortable position. Yeah, unless we did hack backslash bodge, but um, we can't change the. I think that's grammatically no, incorrect. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, yeah. um, okay. Well, anyway, so after that slight damp squib, and um, and yeah, as Hank said, apology. Plus, please, 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 just yeah. keep hold of those hacks and bodges and wait for the appropriate moment, which hopefully won't be long. Killian said when he gets back from Flanders, it's top of his list of things to do. Yeah. So uh, that and probably sort out the water bottle situation. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. We do, yeah. So without further ado, speaking yeah. of water bottles, it's time for caption competition. <laughs> That's this- that. This is nice, Hank. You, that, you, brought, you brought us a fresh one today. That's actually what I used yesterday when I was doing my fueling video. 
Uh, okay, so anyway, this is your opportunity to win a GCN Camelback water yeah. bottle. Um, a new one uh, <laughs> with a GCN logo that is on its way. Um, anyway, this uh, yeah, this is a photo we gave you last week, and actually it's, it's quite um, fitting. Andy Stedman it's is a really the winner. Photo, yeah. And he says, Sai says that the GCN water bottles will arrive soon. And there we have Elisa Balsamo uh, absolutely rolling. Um, yeah, I mean it is quite, it is it's, quite fitting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is what all our viewers are doing right now. But the bottles will arrive soon. They will. Genuinely, they will. Yeah, yeah. I've got my fingers crossed too, Sai. If I'm honest. Yeah. Um, moving swiftly on, we've got another photo for you here. Um, it is a man on the start line of Dvarstor Vlanderen uh, holding, I thought initially it was some kind of trombone, but actually it's a bell, is he, isn't it? Is he the town crier? Well, I mean, he's a he's a very jolly, beardy looking man. Um, and uh, I thought for a moment that uh, Tom Bonin was making a comeback. Oh yeah, I see the resemblance. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, Tom, Tom Bonin uh, makes a surprise return to Dvarstor Vlanderen. That's my go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to even attempt to get anywhere close to that. So if you have a better one, a better in caption that is, um, please let us know in the comment section below and hopefully you'll be in with a chance of winning our coveted Camelback water bottles that are on its way, size says. Yeah, either that or um, if you ask really nicely, you can have this lovely one of Hank's. Yeah. Um, if it's that good. Comment of the week now. Should we crack on? Yes, crack on, my friend. Okay, we had some absolute perlers under last week's show. So we were asking you uh, whether or not you had ever seen Love Blossom on a cycling club group ride. And sure enough, <laughs> you lot have. There were loads. It's really cool, actually. Loads of people said they had met their partners through the cycling club on a group ride. Um, this one from Mid-Century Adventures. I met my partner on a group ride. We've been together 13 years and still ride together every oh, Sunday. That. Yeah, that's super cool, isn't it? Um, S for... If for short. S for if for short. Yeah, okay. Um <laughs> Uh, actually, hang on a minute. No, wait a minute. I want to... This one. Arbon3880. Uh, I met my significant other on a group ride 10 years ago, pulling her through a nasty headwind and sharing a beer afterwards. We've been together ever since. You can bond in a headwind, can't oh, you? Oh, God. Absolutely. I mean, you go through <laughs> some hardships into headwinds, let me tell you that. That is true, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got one in from uh, Steve who said, don't take up ballet side. The best you can hope for is to graduate with a 2-2. There you go. I actually did get a 2 2 in did real you life. Actually? Yeah, it's a sportsman's first. So I was quite happy with that. <laughs> Mum and dad, less so. But uh, anyway, there we go. Um, now, we also, we were sort of slightly concerned at one point, James, about, um, about the welfare of some mice that had been used in a scientific experiment. But Bike and Dog Trip said mice are actually pretty good swimmers, just like rats. They can swim and tread water for up to I three did not days know that. and can even swim underwater for a few minutes. I did not know that. No, I did not know that. I just, I consistently find that animals make me make me feel like humans are rubbish. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they're so much more superior. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But, you know, there we go. <laughs> anyway, my, mice are better swimmers. Um, so, uh, so there. Um, and then this one, uh, I, I did have a chuckle from DJR Lloyd. Anyone joining this video at the point where Sai said it was too fat to go through my rim hole may have wondered what you were talking about. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I was talking about valve extenders. What a sentence, though. Yeah, but, you know, it was... <laughs> and it was literally exactly that. The valve extender wouldn't fit through the rim. It was... Yeah, let's stop there, Sai. Um, okay. under, <laughs> under what gear do you need for cycling? Uh, I enjoyed this one from Ard Giel, who said, a bottle of sunny, warm weather. Unfortunately, they don't sell that here in Scotland. Um, and to be honest, that's exactly what I would absolutely love over the last three months of riding and sogging wet and riding through mud instead of gravel. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Underneath uh, Connor's best emergency snacks to keep you cycling, Albert Buckingham Ellison said, I recall mid-race, circa 2015, a guy reaching into his back pocket for a snack and busting out some of those net bags of chocolate money. I can't think of a worse ride fuel. I can never get, even when I'm sat on the sofa on Christmas Day in my stocking, I can't get into those coins. No. No. I literally can't get into them, so let alone when you're riding. Yeah. 
yeah, trying like to say, get into a it, freaking chocolate coin. Even on Christmas Day, you end up with a mouthful of foil, yeah. don't you? If, yeah. I mean, if you don't know what we're talking about, this might be a peculiarly British thing, I don't know, but you get these little, literally yeah. net bags, and in them are like, Gold-looking coins, and they're um, all in different sizes. So imagine right, if you yeah. had like tiny ones. Yeah, <laughs> like, and you basically like five P ones. You've got to use your fingernail to pull off the gold oh. foil, and then it exposes <gasps> some particularly nasty cheap chocolate yeah. inside. Um, so uh, I have never heard of that. That is race food or ride food. No, but, I suspect the guy got dropped. That's <laughs> uh, what yeah. I'm going to make you yeah. say. Um, Brian left I know it's staged video when Connor leaves his bike unlocked outside it did make him very nervous and to be honest I can I can totally vouch for that it, it does get quite nerve wracking but sometimes when we're filming the filmmaker is standing next to the bike so you don't need to worry that is true yeah but I would not leave my bike outside a <laughs> petrol station um, I was I was a bit weirded out the other day when uh, I walked into a local supermarket and a guy had taken his very nice bike in there and left it by the veggies whilst he went to buy something. I was like, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anyone take a bike into a supermarket. Before. But where would you put your bike? Well, this is it. I'd, you know, I'd you be like, oh, I can't outside? go to the supermarket because yeah. you know I don't want my bike to get nicked. But he was just like, nope, I'm just going to rock in here, ride round the like dairy bit. I, I have actually apples. asked. I've been to a shop and actually gone. Look, would you mind if I put this behind the counter? And what did they say? Well, I went shot, and they said, yeah. So if you're, if you're actually, I think. A lot no of... one can say no to you, <laughs> though, can they? With that little face, so friendly. I think if you're really nice to people and we all, you know, you say, oh, would you mind? I Hank think everyone's is, quite happy. Hank is the most about. charming individual. <laughs> like, you go, out, you go out and about with Hank and before long he's struck up a conversation <laughs> with some total randomer and you'd think they'd, like, been friends, friends for half their yeah. lives. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. love people, don't I? Well, <laughs> and, and they love you, Hank. They really do. Uh, right. <laughs> What's coming up on this channel? On the Good channel this question. week, <laughs> we're going Paris Roubaix crazy. We, aren't we? absolutely. Are. Everyone loves Paris Roubaix, mm. particularly us lot here. You and Connor were out in Roubaix on the cobbles, weren't you? And you've created a load of absolute bangers. We have, yeah, load, yeah, loads of cobble content, as you say, and some really interesting, cool stuff that I think everyone will absolutely love to warm and to whet your appetite before Roubaix, which is absolutely my favourite race of the year. Yeah, so uh, you've already seen one from Sunday, which was the epic ride where you found a load of hidden sectors of cobbles. We did indeed. Then there's a close I nearly up. killed Connor. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, there's a close up of the pave on Thursday. Do pros need suspension? Which is going to be really interesting. Which I think they do, genuinely. We just spoil that one yeah. then. <laughs> Don't bother watching that. <laughs> Hank's just told you the answer. Maybe we could bleep it out or something. Uh, and then uh, on Saturday, you found a local pro, didn't you? Uh, so can you keep up with a pro over cobbles? Don't Not tell, tell you that. Answer, <laughs> I just yeah. I think I think I've got my suspicions. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday, I was just picturing Connor yeah. getting dropped. Sorry, <laughs> that's not difficult to yeah. to picture. No. And then on Sunday, actually, we were rewinding to Flanders because uh, Killian, Killian finally got to do the Tour of Flanders Sportif. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he might not have been working very hard at GCN, but he did get to do, go and do that, which yeah. I can't wait to see. I can't either. That'd be proper, proper cool. Um, and then also over on GCN Tech, then there's going to be a close-up of cobbled tech as well. So Connor is uh, up close and personal with a load of Parry Bay bikes, which is cool. Sounds dodgy, but I think it was all above board. Yeah, you'll be surprised as well. I was helping him there as well. Oh, really? With some cobbled tech. I was checking out the tyres, if you want to know. We have actually run these videos past Ollie and <laughs> Alex just to make sure that they make sense. Um, I, I literally picked out some absolute perlers, mate. Did you? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. But you have to wait and see and watch the video. Is it as good as that one uh, from a couple of years ago? We were like, this front wheel has no. been designed to be a front wheel. No, the worst is when I did the bus tour. <laughs> when I opened the drawer, this is a gel. <laughs> this is some fruit and some yogurt. Your yogurt's from strawberry to strawberry and fruit and yogurt. Got other yogurts. Yeah, yeah, that takes me back. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've come a long way. <laughs> Haven't we all, mate? <laughs> Haven't we all? Right, okay. Um, I think we're going to leave it there for this week. We are indeed. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video and don't forget that thumbs up button because I'd really appreciate it because Dan's not here and I want to show that I did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. See, he is. He's such a charming man. <laughs>
Who wouldn't want to leave a thumbs up after that? 